Now, as you all know, we here at Race Chaser love the movies. We love movies like A Star is Born, and we know we love movie podcasts. Yes. And now, one of the greatest movie podcasts of all time, that's not a joke, that's the honest to God's truth, is available right here on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. It's called Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. This beloved podcast reviews films with leading actors of color, and it analyzes them in the context of race and Hollywood's diversity issues, and also it's funny as shit and a pleasure to listen to. Works. So jump into Black Men Can't Jump today. Jera, James, and John have an incredible back catalog of over 150 movies that you can check out right now. And they have brand new episodes every Monday featuring discussions about brand new movies like Night School, Black Klansmen, Crazy Rich Asians, Black Panther. Whatever the big movie out that weekend is, these guys are on it. And you want to be in on the conversation. So movie lovers, culture lovers, politic lovers, comedy lovers, make it a blockbuster night this is your new favorite show subscribe to black men can't jump in hollywood on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcast today and now on On with the the show show. forever dog Hello. 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 And welcome back to Race Chaser, a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single episode of RuPaul's RuPaul's Drag Drag Race, Race. starting from the very beginning. This is the beginning. My name's Alaska. What's yours? I'm Willem. What's up? Hi. Hi. So good to see you again. So good to see you. It's been a week, exactly. So good. Yeah. Yeah. It's been Um, a week. It's been a week since we lost Sahara Davenport in that lip sync, that black velvet lip sync. That was amazing. Yes. And we have the uh, we have the lipstick message, of course, which says live, love and believe. And this is I mean, it's kind of a poignant moment. And I, I want to take a moment uh, just to acknowledge that two years after the airing of this season, Sahara Davenport passed away. And I remember, I mean, it was, it was, I remember when it happened. I remember I was walking through the airport, I turned my phone on and I got a message from Jiggly and she was a wreck. Yeah. I mean, it really was like, it it was really out of nowhere and just kind of happened all of a sudden. And we were all really like, really um, shook by it. Yeah, it was rough. And I remember they aired her episodes as like a tribute. They like re-aired them. Um... And she, I mean, and that worked because she had a really classy, you know, a really good run on the show. Yeah. She she didn't have any, uh, you know, it, even her elimination, it was like... Stay classy. It was she did great. Onward, she was upward. beautiful. Yeah, 100%. Um, the wig that she designed for that rocker challenge, Juju put it on as she's wiping the mirror. And I was like, whose wig is that? And then I said, oh, it's Sahara. Because it's like that good Whitney, but with a little green flip in the back. Yeah. Like, I, I love Sahara. She was the first person to welcome me to the family. Uh, two weeks after I left Drag Race, Jiggly was already back in New York, and they went to see me in the show that I was doing, that I left Drag Race for. And she, I just remember she her arms were out, and she said, welcome to the family. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, she's amazing. She- and even her lipstick message is classy. Live, love, and believe. Yeah, maybe she couldn't put her ass on the mirror. She couldn't reach. <laughs> It's not an option for everybody. Um, all th- She's fierce. We love her. Yeah. We love all of our sisters. It's yeah. so cool watching this because I'm getting so much backstory for these people that I've known for years. Yeah. Um, this this mini challenge tells a lot about the girls on this episode because it's the reading challenge. Yeah. And seeing the girl, the dolls go in, yeah. it's like Tyrus plays coy. She says, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Very smart. And then she goes in and then yeah. each girl keeps getting better. And yeah. the way that it's edited, this first reading challenge, is kind of cool because they show each girl as, like, their own performance instead of splicing it and, like, you know, right. building it that way. It's more pure. Yeah. And it's really a it's really a telling challenge. And, I mean, it's become, like, everyone's favorite challenge. Yeah. 
and like people are doing tours where it's basically just the reading challenge. It's the like the haters roast and like uh, the haters. There's another hater or, in England or something. Yeah, yeah the reading tour, haters or ball, or something. I don't know. Yeah, re- readers, the readers digest <laughs> tour, readers digest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we love that. We love seeing drag queens uh, be rude to each other in a witty, funny way. And we're, we love it. We I Pandora brings up that her. Um, uh, adolescence wasn't great and uh, she attempted suicide and I think people that know great pain can be great comedians too because uh, that's the truth you know comedy comes from pain for sure the yeah. reason it's funny is because there's like a seed of truth most times you know exactly um, and there's a lot of truths on this reading challenge my favorite one was when Pandora said that uh, Jessica Wilde's outfits look like a donkey fucked a pinata and threw up all over itself <laughs> I was like oh wow <laughs> specific the fact that it could be that it can keep going and it hits all the right notes and it's still funny. Yeah. It's great. But Jujube slays the classic Tyra oh, barbecue yeah. grill fucked line. Oh, honey. Is there, was your barbecue canceled? Because your grill is fucked. Oh, she's, she kills that. Mm. She slays that. It's obvious. Yeah. All the good memes, the walk down, the shoulders. Yeah. She gets the sound effects on her lifting of the sunglasses. Mm hmm. Tyra has, um, has done a great job, you know, pretty much. But the yeah. surprising one on this is Tati, who who never fails to um, entertain me, doesn't give much lip on this at all. No, she says, I don't, I can't do it. Yeah, she does one good one for Tyra, and then the second one doesn't really land. She's just like, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to. It's hard. Um, it is. Jessica goes off though. Jessica uh, it goes crazy, and it's funny and entertaining. It is, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they were given the uh, the day before uh, alert because in because in the reading challenge you, they tell you the night before tomorrow's going to be the reading challenge so you can prepare something. Uh, they definitely told us the night before that we were doing it. Because sure. I'm I mean especially for this it's like that's kind of necessary because mm-hmm. you want it to be like. You want it to be, like, crafted well. That's how I knew to bring in... Um, Chad gave me her business card, and she had a MySpace thing on it yeah. still. And this was past the days of MySpace, so I brought it in for the reading challenge, and I handed it to Rue. Like, I was <laughs> like, if you need to contact Chad, you can go to his MySpace right here. She went, MySpace! It was that. Ah. Um, they definitely told us the night before, sh- uh, for sure. Got um, it. The most exciting part of this mini challenge, though, is that our favorite pass around party bottom, Jeffrey Miranda's back to He's back! Shill his, to shill his swill. <laughs> She's sh- shilling the swill. swill shiller. <laughs> that swill shiller, Jeffrey Miranda. Pass around party bottom. She just got <laughs> back from, uh, she just got back from Pride and Palm Spring. White party, actually. White she party. Was doing, yeah. She's she was on the planning committee. There. She was out there for like a couple weeks. Like, we, <laughs> we couldn't get a hold of her. <laughs> no. She said, but she's don't back. call. Like, she's fine. She works hard, but she plays hard. You know, Barry Asai is not to be taken lightly. She, she com- <laughs> commands that drink's presence for this you whole are, episode. You are not supposed to snort it, though. Uh, like, you really... <laughs> you're not supposed to cook and put should. ketamine with it and a little vanilla. <laughs> or dried out version. Um, they're here you to promote... You do it. <laughs> Our apologies to Jeffrey Moran. There is no evidence to support the, this idea that we think Jeffrey Moran is a pastor on Party Bottom. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing to support that. I would like to get Jeffrey Moran as a guest. Me too. Working on it. Okay, great. Re- re- do the reach out. The do the reach out. Well, uh, he'll do a reach around. Uh, before we move on, there's a little bit of footage that I would like to address. Uh, B- Dipper, could you bring up that image on the computer screen? Willem, this, boop, is, boop, 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 um, boop. this is something I'd like you to see. Oh, maybe the battery died. Oh, oh. oh. this is Jessica Wilde pissing. Thank you. Which Which. later is funny because she doesn't know what a golden shower is. Yeah. Oh, my. It tracks. It tracks. It tracks. It It really tracks. Whatever story editor did that. It really tracks. They're like. You get a Rudy clap. They're like Jessica Wilde um, piss party. Uh, Piss party one. (laughs) They. They show the the famous hotel room like the guys getting ready really quick. The B-reel. The boy B-reel. Yeah. And they. The B for boy reel. They show Jessica Wilde pissing standing up in the chair. <laughs> hmm which is cool you know um they have to do a uh book what did i do it wrong 
it's somebody sleeping, okay? The wake up, the shaving. Juju and sliding the one bang. She got that side bang swoop. Juju swooping and duping. And, um, and it must be staged. I don't know. She has a sense of humor about these yeah. things. I'm sure she was like, how about me peeing? <laughs> Um, <laughs> the book cover is being shot by legends Idris and Tony or Idris and Tony I don't know how to say it but I follow them on Instagram they're amazing what are the, they're photographers mm-hmm. yeah they're big oh work I think Fabulous. they do like Beyonce and stuff yes and eh. what is the main challenge the main challenge is a book challenge uh, where the girls have to design a cover photo and do a whole concept and um, would you be good at this I think yes I was okay at it, I think. My book missed the New York Times bestseller list by less than 50 copies. What? I know. I know. I should have just bought them myself. You should... Okay. That... Yeah. The week it was released. Um, but I did really well. It's two years old as of two days ago. Um, wow. And the first print... And it's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. The first print was 15,000 copies, and there's already, uh, I think, 30 in print, and at least 28,000 sold. So it it did really well enough that like I'm I'm gonna do a second book and the title of that is Tranifest Destiny. Oh, okay. so now that it's out in the world, no one can steal it. Ha, mine. I licked it, so it's mine. Yeah. Um. Now the book concepts for some of these girls, they go in and do a photo. Sh- it shows them like drawing concepts and like in the workroom. But my favorite is when uh, Idris and Tony say to Jessica, "What are you thinking about?" And she said, "My dreams." <laughs> oh, and right. it's like she's praying and then um that she goes to sleep and then they say um well maybe think of more dreams or <laughs> all of your dreams and then she puts her head down like she's sleeping <laughs> and she's amazing but then she finds props she just seems really flustered and she's rattled yeah and for the yeah it just seems yeah. like there's a lack of um comprehension yeah with some with some of the and they were like okay why don't you try some props um pick up something that refers to your dreams yeah and she picks up the scales of justice. <laughs> well, immigration reform, you know? So I see where she was going with that. What, oh Wait, man. Puerto Rico is American. Yeah. Never, fuck, never mind. Sorry, I yeah. tried. <laughs> um, Tyra is here to dedicate her book to Beyonce, Our Lord and Savior, which is no shock. Um, yes, and she sweats heavily during the... Uh, profusely. I didn't know that she was such a big sweater. Maybe it was the... Oh, you know what? That outfit, it looked like latex. It was shiny, black patent. You know you don't breathe in a patent. And you've got no. a wig on and lights. Yeah, um, she was melting. Yeah, fully totally. Dripping. Um, Rue says the girls have to do an interview with celebrity journalist Mark Malkin, which is kind of cool because I had to do a lot of stuff to promote my books, and this was exactly what it was. Interviews, my book tour, I remember it was, um, I think, 14 gigs in 16 days in 12 cities. Wow. Like some days yeah, were dope. It moment. was crazy. It was a lot. The and looks. you had all the clothes. Oh, all of them. All the clothes. Honey. I think you had a, a Chanel suit uh, repurposed several times. I was like Mar- Marge, Marge. Marge Simpson. Yep. Are you still wearing that, that mangled, mangled Chanel? Chanel. <laughs> 100%. Um, some, some of the book tour stops had looks, but no books. Two of them, there were no Did books. You, oh I was like, God. Brandon, there's no books at my brunch. <laughs> in Miami, that was Dear a fun God. One. Did yeah. you have sound bites prepared? Like there can be one hundred people in a room, and all you need is, and ninety nine of them cannot believe in you, right. and all, all you it need takes is that one person can change your life. You. Um, I was asked the same questions repeatedly, so I Girl, would. That's there, the name. That's so. That's it. the name of press, and then yeah. you find entertaining ways to answer it for who you're on the phone with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. It's one of those things where you do repeat yourself sometimes, but it's it's fine. You know? Yeah. You get used to it. If someone is an asshole and splices them all together like they did with um, our Lord and Savior Gaga um, and makes fun <laughs> of her, that's on them. I won't dignify that and watch that. Gaga, God is a Gaga. Girl, of course. Mm-hmm. She's good at it. She yeah. knows what she's fucking doing. She's yeah. selling the product mm-hmm. selling and making product. it look good. Like that Berry Acai. Honey. I absolute. Yeah. Yeah. You know who sells the product in that one? Jessica Wild. She does. She kills it in an interview. She says, oh, I just can't concentrate. This, this. But then Jeffrey Moran, old PPPM. <laughs> oh, my God. PPBM. P-A-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P
Pabda- she gets Pabda- red deep. Deep for promoting. And in a casual way, I think she's the most natural, the most drag queen about it. And when you think about this episode, the first thing you think about is Barry Asai and you think about Jessica Wilde saying it. So technically, she she f- fell into the bottom because she didn't mention the book title. Mm-hmm. So that was the problem. But so did Tati. Tati didn't mention the drink. Right. But Jessica Wilde had the most memorable, like, campaign. Truth. I thought yeah. Ravens was very well-spoken. Um, I don't think it Raven helped. Raven killed her. Yeah, I don't think it helped she look like Nancy Reagan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to our Instagram for Nancy that. Nancy Reagan has a 613 blood, blood cut. <laughs> what? Think Nancy Reagan, but rocker chick. What? <laughs> Nancy Reagan, but make it rocker. <laughs> We're going to make it rocker after this, this break. break. Oh my, Miss Willem, you smell divine. Who, me? Why, it's the ripe smell of last night's fist and glove and leftover Chick-fil-A. Ooh, no, but really, you always really do smell very nice. Thank you. Yeah, hygiene and presentability is always really important to me. <laughs> and fragrance <laughs> is the one thing I'm very particular about. That's why we here at Race Chaser are excited to talk to you about Scentbird. Yes, Scentbird offers 30-day supplies of designer fragrances. So that's very nice. So you get just what you need. You don't waste all that money on a big, expensive bottle that just sits on your shelf barely ever getting used. I hate that. I hate a dusty bottle, which is why I like to change it up with my scents so it's nice not to be locked into one bottle. And Scentbird.com keeps me smelling good month after month. And they actually gave us our choice of scents, and I love them. Wait, this is, like, actually really useful. Girl, yeah. Who doesn't love a fragrance? I get bogged down by a scent if uh-huh. I use it too much. And then all your stuff smells like Mugler. And then you're like, I'm done with it, and I move on. Yeah. But this way, I it, you kind of get to sample and try it. Exactly, yeah. Scentbird has 450 designer brands, and you can choose a different one for every month. Try them all, like Hugo Boss, Gucci, Ooh, Tom tell Ford. tell me there's a Gooch. <laughs> Kenneth Cole, and more. Treat yourself to a monthly scent adventure. That's fun. All right. Uh, so you get a 30-day supply, 120 sprays to be exact. That, that sounds like a weekend for you. Oh. And with free shipping, it comes straight to your door with no hassles. What are some of your favorite scents? Um, uh, well, what have I worn in the past? I've worn Alien. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was wearing this... Um, Red for filth. Uh, oh, Red for Filth, of course. My first f- ever fragrance was Armani Aqua di Gio. Oh. Yeah, that was my, like, male scent. I personally love Mold Spice. Oh, Mold Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty Rose. But listen up, all you <laughs> smelly race chasers out there, with this <laughs> exclusive <laughs> <laughs> Uh. (laughs) with this (laughs) stop concentrate with this exclusive offer you get 50% off your first month today yeah and that's only like 750 for your first cologne or perfume that's nothing yes so go to scentbird that's S-C-E-N-T bird dot com slash drag and use our code drag for 50% off your first order. S-C-E-N-T-B-I-R-D dot com slash drag. Sign on. Smell great. Mm. <laughs> we are back. I just want to take this moment. This is not an ad break. We are actually back, but I want to take a moment we are to, broken. to plug your new hat, which I think is <gasps> so adorable. You. Dipper, could you grab that? It's on the top there. It'll be on the there. Instagram with a link for purchase. This is really cute, really clever. It's a play off of the Goodwill um, logo, mm-hmm. and it says Goodwillum, and it's you. Uh, it's your little face. Um, but the, from- the goodwill face, but with a wig and a joy and eyelashes. And a little bit of powder blue. Just it's on that so lid. It's so cute. Thank you. And high qual. Yeah, I wanted to make merch that I would actually wear and like my dad could wear and stuff. Did and you go to those guys that did buy hats? Or you went no, I went with somebody else. But I do love these hats. And um, I got the idea because... I love these hats. I love these hats. Um, every- everybody's been going to my store and whenever people get stuff, I'm like, it's like Goodwill, but Goodwillem. And so yeah. it's um 
these drag stores are popping up too. There's a store in LA called uh, LA's Queen of Angels, and it's I want to go there. Me I too. saw someone post about it. I posted about it. Um, Rudeness, the drag queen. Um, she opened a store downtown LA, and it's like got all the drag essentials, and it's like it's awesome. And I think we definitely, you know, could do, do they like, have like things, field trip things, tuckings, wigs. They have medicals. Wig. They got it all, girl. It's a drag store. It's a drag store. What's in downtown it called? LA. Queen of Angels, I think. We're full. This is fully an ad Field break trip. unintentionally, but Field trip. I want to go the queen. I need to write it down. Yeah. Queen of Angels. Yeah, she's really cool. What the fuck did I do with my pen? I had a pen here. I, I swear I had a pen here Chanel. and it was just here. Is that it? And also I'm missing a it was signed eight by 10 of Shauna Brooks. <laughs> if anybody took my mommy's photo or said it somewhere, I know we we're all over for the challenge. I know it was just here and now <laughs> it's not. Thank you, Dip. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I want to. We should do a field trip there. I yeah. would definitely like to go. And thank you. Wear my hat while you're there. It's called Queen of Angels, LA. It's um new one stop drag shopping. Pretty cool. That's cute. It's I in... want to support. Oh, and it's on Santee. So it's right by the alley. Oh, work. Work. Um, that yeah. is the one stop shopping experience. Makeup photo studio, retail boutique owned and operated by Latinx artist, artist Rudeness. Um, I'm so I'm so happy for her. I saw her last night too. She's rad. She better work. Yeah. Um, I think that she should stock my book at this store. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, hey, girl, sell these. We'll split it. Um, yeah, dude. I think that um, this book photo shoot is really cool for this challenge because you know, y- eventually, if you do have enough stuff that people want to know about it, you should teach them. And the only reason I wrote my book is because Neil made a joke, like literally, he's like, you should write a book, and I was like, oh wow. And then when the time came to write it. I was like, Hey, remember when you said this and he actually read it and his forward is one of the best things in the book, in my opinion. But yeah. like, it's cool to be able to like, um, look back and say, Oh, we did this, you know? Yeah. And Rue was one of my earliest inspirations for that fact that I was like, she's so successful at what she does. She wrote a book. I did a yeah. book report on it, you know? Um, yeah. some of these, books- my personal favorite is the glossary. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a gr- my voice is on the my, audio book. But her voice. That voice. <laughs> she still has that voice. voice. Oh, windows the the photo so the girls have to do a photo shoot to promote their book. We is had a to photo do a- shoot something you excel at? Well, um I don't like photo shoots. Because, really? Yeah, because they're silent. And that's crazy to me to hear you even, those words come out of your mouth because you always you have always like killed it at every photo shoot I've ever been with you on. Like Thanks. you're really great at it. Thank you. Um, you too. But if you watch my season, you could see like during my photo shoot for my dragazine, I'm making jokes the whole time and I'm funny during the photo shoot, but I'm not actually comfortable with just like trying to be pretty. Like I'm right. that's not in my wheelhouse. I didn't grow up being pretty. I don't know how to do it. Um, I grew up with mouth and um, right. knowing how to use that. Um, so when it's just like silent, it's not my medium, you know? I hear that. Um, so, it's never been comfortable for me. Yeah. So fake it till you make it though. In my head, I mm-hmm. literally sing little songs like titties, titties. If you got them, you could bounce them, which is from Grant <laughs> from House of Avalon. <laughs> um, and then I say little stupid words like Thursday. Yeah. Like little things that I know or pretend Chris, Chrissy, like Chrissy Teigen or, um, Rihanna. And then I also have, uh, Christy Brinkley. You know, you just those do are like your poses. Rihanna at the Met Ball, okay. which is like the stare down fierce. Yeah, and then Chrissy Teigen, which is just like happy Christy Brinkley type yeah. of thing. Chrissy Christie, that's what I call it in my head. Chris, Chrissy Christie, not New Jersey's governor. Um, and then uh, my Thursday. Can you do Thursday? Thursday. Because it it's your got, lips pout. You get three good lips in it. Thursday. Yeah. Um. Also prune, but that's shorter, so I say thursday yeah um all these girls are working all their tricks but like they they have to get props and like when i when i had to design my magazine cover it was very much the same it was like a a long day Mm multi-part challenge and then you get thrown in oh we're doing an interview when we did our dragazines our interview portion never actually aired they showed it to us on the runway did do an interview yeah i remember because fifi barred my jacket Wow. Yeah, she needed something. I was like, wear this jacket. An Nancy jacket? No, it was, it, was a, it was a way cuter jacket. Um, but uh, that's why I was kind of surprised when I watched back the show that, like, she still didn't like me at that point in the show because I was like, 
I was letting you borrow stuff. Like, I thought we were cool, but in interview, her mouth went. Yeah. Um, nice girl, though. Um, their photo shoot is timed, and they yeah. seem to all get the same number of frames, but it looks like some of them um, didn't use it as well as others. Raven came in with a plan, knew what she was doing. Yeah. Raven excelled at this challenge. She's always the dark horse at everything, I think, you know? Yeah. Even when she's doing bad, you're like, at least she looks great. Yeah. And it helps to when you're going into a challenge like this to really know what you have what you want and what you have in mind. And like Raven really does that. She Mm -hmm. takes charge. She's a leader. She says, okay, we need that, 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 that it's going to go like this. It's going to look like this. If you go in wishy washy, then it's like, it kind of just fucks the whole thing up. Um, This is very much. It reminds me of your uh, perfume challenge where they said, didn't they say you were doing too much or something or you were directing everything and then it edited up beautifully. I drew storyboards of every shot. You always do. And I appreciate that because it explains to the crew and everybody else seeing, like, this is how we're going to work. This is where we're going. These are what I have planned. You do it on our videos and I love it. And other people I've been working with, Dipper and Kane, have started to do it. And it's really helpful. It is very helpful. It gets what's in your brain out on paper Mm -hmm. just to, like, share with the people putting it together. That's why I had giant post-its for my new album, uh no that's what i call drag music out now um it's out yeah it's gonna be out october 26th yeah yeah i made three uh three giant post-its with all my videos so i could see them and everybody could see how hard the month that was coming up was gonna be and we checked them off one by one i got six videos done work i know so good giant post-its um are they like actual yeah. post-its but giant yeah they have sticky on the back and everything we'd like to take a minute to talk to you about giant, giant post-its. post-its use pro- use promo code tra- i'm just kidding don't use it do you have any it's kids i forget their names <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh jessica wilde was the little wishy-washy who else uh juju b they kind of read because she had a fan but then she threw it on the yeah. floor <laughs> i i love you can cut that out you put in fake grass for raven right like come on yeah they, here's the thing the photographers seem to have nitpicks about everybody because producers yeah. ask say one positive and negative like the fact that juju threw a fan on the floor it was fine you <laughs> know they were just like I... what's the positive and negative um tati's book concept seems overall kind of weak because she says you know the book's going to be about my life before i was a drag queen be, be, before and I started Tati. drag at 14 so it's like what what is the book going to be about snack and nap time like what did you <laughs> so do before out. you were Tati but um she looks beautiful Pandora I think did really well I I thought her her book is called out of the box mm-hmm. great yep. title totally I could see that being an actual book uh she is coming out of emerging from a, a box, box for the photo shoot points it's great it is she knew what she wanted and she did it based on the walk around i think i can tell who's going to be in the bottom though mostly because there's also the foreshadowing of tatiana saying how do you spell successful <laughs> which if you if out of all 48 hours of footage to make 42 minutes for one episode to have that sound bite and then to have that person in the bottom too dun, dun, that, dun, was dun. The gift. that was the gift yeah she so gave them. thank you for that you world of wonder <laughs> y'all make good tv um <laughs> how many x's are in successful, successful. s-u-c-c-e-x-s-s-u-f-l-n-o-w yes <laughs> <laughs> are we holding for siren we got a siren we do we have to tatiana hold for the siren now successful now tatiana now, now. <laughs> not tatiana later follow tatiana of tatiana tidbits it's Tatiana now, honey. <laughs> Not Tatiana for- later. And don't you forget it. Not Tatiana Tuesday. Darling. Tatiana now. Darling. <laughs> um, nobody knows how to say acai berry for the interview, kind of. And some girls just skip over and say, mmm, berries. Right. <laughs> Ooh, this berry drink. Tyra tries to uh, 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 curtail it uh-huh. by just saying, oh, this berry drink. Pandora's berry. Pronuncia- pronunciation is precise. <laughs> except she. <laughs> 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 except we haven't been drinking acai, I swear. Except she doesn't say the brand, and Jeffrey Moran is displeased. <laughs> he said, who's in my sling? You didn't say <laughs> oh absolute. God, 
Stop! She's mad. Oh, Tatiana has choice words. She's like, well, since Morgan has left, Raven has blossomed verbally. Oh, she just has 30 years behind her and she just wants to share the knowledge with Mm. everybody. Yeah, well. Hates her. Raven is, but Raven is going in. She's saying twice during makeup. Yeah, well, Tati, did you just, were you just not feeling that now that we want to talk? I just want to know. We can be casual. (laughs) And then she goes, I mean, you like totally just didn't say anything. She goes up to the the mirror like, what were you feeling? Like, why you just decided not to? Like, going in and it's like, we're not friends. Tatiana's like, I'm not going to say anything until I get into the interview chair, babe. She's smart. Then I'm going to let have. Yeah, you know uh, Tati is ready on the day for it, but she may not be having your little backstage thing. No. She'll tell it, though. No. Um, I think that... Uh, <laughs> I think... It's- Tatiana, will you uh, tell us... Um- about Raven and what you what think you're about not her? seeing is that Tyra is, <laughs> is a, a complete, complete and bitch. total bitch. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Um, this runway with Rue, she's delivering it. She looks, yeah, she looks I banging. Th- she looks great. She's wearing auburn hair, which uh, this is a very season two thing. We're seeing RuPaul in experimental hair colors mm-hmm. a lot. We did a pink, we did a red this year, yes. And now this, like, sort of auburn. It's really pretty. The lace is really great. I mean, it's, it, it's that good strawberry sweetheart. Strawberry sweetheart. Is it? La, it's not. Strawberry sweetheart is more blonde on the tips. A little 613 kiss at the ends. What is this? It is a vanity, isn't it? No, it's uh, it's a Matthew that he's had that he had for a while. I oh, know. Because really? he, he showed me her one blonde that he pulls ba- that he used to pull back. That was the base for all the pullback ones. Yeah. He said, this was just a human hair I found for like 99, blah, blah, blah. And I've, I've used it for 10 years. And it's, it's one of those old pieces. It just <sighs> works. He takes care of it. This red wasn't, um, a vanity, but it's great. It's the same red. It was the same red that was on Rue's Christmas album cover. That was ho, that. Ho, ho. Cri- yeah, he he restyled. Ooh, but it was curled. He, you know, he could restyle. Ooh, it has a little blonde. And remember it. the frizzle frazzle mm. on the cover of that. Oh, Ooh, that frizzle frazzle blonde. So good, artist. Um, really, really great. What more displays of artistry will be on our Instagram? We're showing the close up contour of Raven's nose, so all you queens can get into that. Because all the queens, I I like to go around the globe and find each town's Raven. The one yeah. that's been like, oh, you've been checking for Raven, the Micah Holly White, uh, the Admira Thunderpuss, like all the girls that are clearly inspiration. The one that everyone in that town is like, she can paint, taking cues from her uh-huh. and yeah. like how to do makeup. 100%. Yeah. Um, Guest judges, Gigi Levangi Grazer. Who's uh, a first wife of Brian Grazer, producer. Really? Yeah. Uh, work. And Jackie Collins. An authoress. Authoress. Poor um, little bitch, bitch girl. girl. Such great titles. I've read a Jackie Collins. Really? Oh, What yeah. are they? Like, are they sexy? Um, or like they're just like kinda... sweeping romances with uh, thrilling female protagonists like Lucky Santiago. Oh, wow. Um, she, she had a great, um, she had a lot of great 80s books that my mom read and I used to read them after. I wasn't allowed, but I did. Great books Work. like that. Um, Jackie Collins was the T. And she's Joan Collins' um, sister. So very of that ilk, the refined. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't? Uh, oh, yeah, girl. And she lives in a pol- she lived in a palatial, like, gorgeous mansion in San Francisco in the toniest neighborhood there was. Wow. My husband showed it to me when we were up there. He's like, that's Jackie Collins' house. I was like, damn, books is good. Girl, the books. Books are lovely. The you books. know what else is lovely? A break. Take a break. Do you love Mad Men? Um, yes, I love Mad Men. I can say that. It's my favorite store, honestly. Really? Yeah. I, I'm I there that. every week. And it's one of those things where I'm like, thank God they're here. Because I go to other states and someone's like, hey, I got this scraggly rolled blunt. Do you want to smoke right. on that? And I say, I'm not putting lips to that. No, ma'am. Pull up your pants. <laughs> Today's cannabis culture is honestly everywhere, and um, it's time to drop all the labels. You're a queen, an artist, executive. That's true. We yeah. are all those we things. We are all of Entrepreneur, those things. Entrepreneur. Model. Um, activist. Intactivist. Author. Published. Author. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. also, a cannabis aficionado. Yes. Yes. Aficionado. Yeah. That's so right. Whether I- you're new to cannabis yeah. or not, you know, MedMen's the place to go. Yes, and they have a variety. They they have not just flour. They also have lotions, vape pens, edibles, bath bombs, 
uh, and so many more. more. So many, 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 more, many, more, more, more. And the good thing is that if you don't know what any of the products are, you just ask somebody in a red shirt there, and they'll give you in-depth product information because they know everything. They're really nice. Yeah. So you can go to one of their 14 retail locations throughout Los Angeles, Orange County, San Diego, and even Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. That's, that's a new one. Yeah, that's a new one. Mm. I, I clientele there. Mm. Go to medmen.com and find your nearest store. You just put in your zip code. And for yes. our listeners, if you visit any MedMen now and mention the code drag mm -hmm. at checkout they'll give you ten dollars off your order that's a free ten dollars so run to your nearest med man and say the word drag, drag. for ten dollars off your purchase girl i could use ten dollars yeah yeah keep it out of reach of children though they'll want that ten dollars for use only by adults 21 years of age or older check, check out med men today, today. Bum, 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 runway. Put the bass in your runway. <laughs> Cover from my guns. Insert a hair whip here. <laughs> <laughs> Tyra does a, okay. A convertible? A she, one and a half reveal. Well, it's she Gucci. looks great. She should have just let the gown speak for itself. She should have. She looked so exquisite. The gown is interesting. Once you take away the fur cuffs, it's got this shoulder cut out. It's body conscious without revealing unsightly pad lines. It's seamless. It's really, really As great. John McLean would say, the seamlessness is there. Yeah. Um, it it's gorgeous. But then she takes this fur cuff off. She and then takes the fur cuff off just for the sake of taking it off. Hikes up the dress. Makes it into a scoochie garment, scooching it up a little bit. And then pulls puts out a belt out and puts tip. on the belt. It's it's it loses it for me. She should have kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. The you know? the reveal should make the outfit better. <laughs> yeah, as not, a rule, the reveal should make you go, ooh, not oh, <laughs> exactly. You know, it was more of a huh. Yeah, huh. but Gigi Lavange Grazier has never She's seen. She's going up. Her and Merle are like, yes. They're like, oh, she put a belt on. Holy she fuck. put a belt <laughs> on. Remember when Bibi Zahara took the belt off mm -hmm. and put it on her yep. on her hand for sure. <laughs> You know, we've all made a brooch into a ring we've with, a, with a ponytail holder. Um, I think Tatiana is uh, confused as to what they want. Too short, too long. Because she wears a dress with horizontal stripes. And, like, you really don't know if, you know, how to please anybody. Once they say, I don't know, too short, too long. You're getting mixed information. Well, they've told her in the past, you're a little too scoochy. A too little scoochy. too slutty. Yeah. So, but she makes I understand. Length now. I under well, I understand what he's saying though because the this dress is long sleeved, and I think it just that tailoring. I mean, it really is about inches. Mm -hmm. Beauty is in millimeters. Yeah, it goes down a little too far, and it kind of weighs it down. This could have been a mini skirt because it has sleeves, and I think it would have been great if the sleeves were the same length as the hem i love oh, that line i do that a lot that would have been cool yeah it's great but um some of the girls just go classic drag She's... juju is flawless oh yeah always just gown gowned gown and bang and i did, juju uh talks about her um her modus of mom Oh, Juju's MO on the runway is making eye contact with the judges. And I would always do yep. the same thing because it holds someone responsible. You have to look at me. I'm taking your attention right now. This is what's happening. Yeah. I always do that on the runway and audiences with shows too. I make eye contact. Every yeah. dollar is always a look in the eye and like a wink or like a, a jerk yeah. off their finger. You have to give them their moments. Yeah. Um, Pandora's runway is um, a taste of glamour, but unlined. Unlined gown. And at this point, it's like there's cameras all over. They see every inch. So you have to come in with lined gowns now. Drag this Race has gotten thing. harder. Yes. Oh, it's gotten so much harder. So much. You can't you can't get away with that. Yeah. And but I mean, this is one of her go to's when she's at home, I'm sure, you know. And like this is like elevated for her. But when you're on TV if you have that slit, you got to line the back of it. You, I, well, I like my slit lined. Mm, line my slit. Yeah. Oh, are we going to do a side-by-side -side of Tatiana and Rebecca Glasscock? Because they, I swear it comes from the same store. They're oh. wearing the um, horizontal black and white stripes. Very much. Yeah. It do be dubious. Dreams of a Dream. golden shower. 
Joan Collins says, if you don't know what a golden shower is, you're very naive. <laughs> and um, ah! I think there's a language barrier there that, um, you know, she may not know. I, But whatever. I I'll think just, Jessica Wilde looks really good on the runway, though. She looks great. I, I wonder what the theme was. Probably. Do we know what the theme was? Drag. Just drag. Drag. It might have been what you would wear to your um book to party. your book party or something. Well, none of them are wearing book party looks. Let Except me tell you. For Raven. Know. She, she does the Streisand gold gown. That's not a book party. But she looks really Where would she really put a Sharpie stuck. in that outfit? She would be signing books. Put it in your tits. <laughs> uh, Raven does look spectacular. She looks She looks really, like really a great. Bond the girl that danced at the beginning of the Bond films. Yeah. Which is my favorite look. Golden goddess, always flawless and I she looks it. like streisand so they say a star is born again oh, um so rue says uh after they've been talking bring back the girls i have made my decision oh okay so we're right. getting we're, we're finding that nub we're, down to a point now we are yeah we're getting closer we're whittling it down like a nose with contouring um and she makes the the clever wordplay of uh, you fumbled your interview and came to the main stage looking like a referee to Tatiana. <laughs> to Tatiana's in stripes. And she says it's so serious. You came to the runway dressed like a referee. Mm-hmm. Which then Very Raven serious. cackles back, unhinges her jaw, full open mouth <laughs>, laughs in the cutaway. It's wonderfully shady editing. And that's why we watch Drag Race. We love it. I have a question about graphic design. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can weigh in because I don't fully remember. But when you did the magazine challenge on yeah. season four, did you get to choose your fonts? We or got. What? To, here's the thing: we got to lay out everything the day before, and we knew what we were the day of that they gave it to us. We knew what we were going to do. They said you'll have um, 15 minutes at the end of the day with um, a computer person. The computer person they brought in didn't know how to work on a Mac. Bye. So we were like, what? And literally, Fifi and I were both, can we just do it ourselves, please? Let, because we were explaining right. stuff. Go here, pull down, X. Like, Fifi. Telling someone who doesn't know how to do it takes 10 times longer than just doing exactly. it yourself. Exactly. Fifi was, this is why we have storyboards, you know? It's yeah. 100%. Fifi was mad enough that um, she was, she did graphic design for the place that she did sold glasses at or whatever. Mm. So we knew what we were doing, a lot of us. And mine was, of course, complicated, extra and too much, much like me. So, I had a lot of things that didn't go right for my cover. So when they called me out on on the main stage, uh, they were like, blah, blah, blah. They're like, we don't really. And I was like, I hate it too. You know, you guys didn't give us time. And literally on all they, all they, all they leave is they said, this is something, someone said something negative. And I said, me too. I think that too. Yeah. And it was just like, you could have just let us do it ourselves, but obviously it was my time to be in the bottom after winning so spectacularly the week before. So I let them have their story. Also, it might not have been fair because the other girls had to use the same guy. Well, so we all no. Most of us knew how to do what we wanted to do too. Right. So, like the girls that didn't complain were fine, but like Squeaky Wheel gets the grease. We were like, we could do a better job than this guy, and he's hindering our performance. My yeah. font was fucked, honey, because they couldn't get it right. I'm a font freak, and, you, and you're great at it. I'm really picky about fonts. Mm-hmm. I. I only have a couple that I actually find stomachable. Would you be there, um would honestly. you be willing to share a font that you like with us, a secret font? I like Avenir Next. You heard it here. Avenir Next, it can go really super ultra thin or you can make it really heavy and, and thick and it's versatile, it's elegant. It's really, really good. You're it's d- my go-to. This is a hooker ad that you've just described. It go really go thin, thin, but it can go really thick. It's versatile. Yeah. It's a good time. Elegant. Fully functional. Fully functional. Um, Raven wins this challenge, and she gets to win a shopping spree at LA IWorks. Which Ooh, are- I won that challenge. You or did? that prize. You do have some great glasses. Yeah. You going to get them retrofitted now that they're back. not? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you going to get them all new lenses now? I th- I would like that. Cat eye specs on, really good. on Heliotrope in LA. They do all my glasses and they change out lenses for like 35. Oh, work. They're great. Yeah. The people at LA Works are really nice. They are. I went in there. They're real nice. And they have some really cool frames. I got some good drag frames. I got white cat eyes with pink lenses. Ooh. Um, I'm, I wrote down in my notes that Raven cuts her eyes. But I don't know what that applies to because she does it so much. Oh, this. well, l- 
Oh, that it's ha- when that's when the winner of the lip sync is revealed. Oh yeah, let's talk about the lip sync for a moment. He's the greatest dancer by Sister Sledge, which is an amazing, like cutting up. It's kind of a difficult lip sync song. It's though. very um plateaus. It's, it's the one same. no, yeah. Um, disco. The girls do what they can with it. It's if you got to keep moving. It's I not think a park. Jessica bark. really performed really great. Oh, I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She was moving the fuck out of it. There is this, and I was searching online for this, and I can't find it anywhere, but there was a meme of this lip sync sped up and set to, like, a death metal rock song. <laughs> if anyone can find it, please tag Race Chaser Pod on Instagram. That's at Race Chaser Pod. Or hashtag Race Chaser because it's a video. Please, please. And it's so hilarious because, like, Jessica Wilde is, like, in super speed <laughs> doing these dance moves to this, like, rocker fucking death metal music. And it's really funny. Um, Tati hikes up her skirt after does. getting the bad. And, um, and it looks so much better. It's so much more scoochy. Yeah. But that hair still has four wigs. This? Oh, Tatiana's hair. Mm-hmm. It has four strands. Yeah. The front, the side. The back. The back well, and no, the bang. Front, side, side, back. <laughs> the you know bang. When you uh-huh. The bang has six hairs total. Yeah. And it gets PC from during a performance. PC. Girl, your band got PC. It was a do, don't get PC with me, honey. Don't, let the, <laughs> don't get PC with me. Jessica, meanwhile, is... Jessica's uh, turning it, guys. Jessica is the World Cup of drag, giving everything. Giving Cup of Life. Giving Cha-Cha. Giving um, Bidi Bidi Bamba. As I was Googling trying to find this, I found that this is considered one of the most controversial eliminations. Oh, like Jessica should have won? Because, because of the lip sync. And, I mean, even we're watching it back right now with no volume on. And, like, the camera's on Jessica so much. The ratio of Jessica to Tati is definitely Jessica heavy. Yeah. She's, like, turning it. She's performing. She's giving. She's, like, Smiling the whole time. Yeah. Tatiana's giving us so sultry burn more. Yes. Yeah. So... I don't know. Do you think it's controversial that um, Tatiana stays and Jessica goes home? I think um, in terms of story keeping, even if, uh, let's say the performance was even mm. and and uh, I, I didn't have a feeling either way on who should have won, which I, I really don't after watching that because I don't trust editing ever. Um, I think that Tatiana is better storyline going forward because she agitates yes. Raven, who is definitely another antagonist and she you want ongoing eat, conflicts with two of the major characters and you, with tyra and raven so you want to keep that definite um you definitely want to keep that piece of the puzzle intact it's engaging it's good yeah so jessica jessica is i've never heard anyone say anything bad about her i love her personally i do too i don't it's think amazing. that um the reality show game where you know it gets to be nitty gritty and mean is anything that she could play well and i don't think she's important to the game from here on out at that point because that's what it is at this point right and i love her and i didn't mean any of that to be shady um, and when they tell tatiana that she's safe she, she- is thoroughly <laughs> gooped have you seen the meme the meme where this? her face where, is all big where it warps. warps yeah <laughs> i love it someone just tagged me in that last week going back and forth <laughs> Um, it's and so good. Raven. She says, are you playing with me? Are you playing with me? Are you playing with me? And then she says, She like Thank doesn't you. believe. She she thinks that she, she misheard. She yeah. And she doesn't believe that she's she's safe and that she's staying. Raven doesn't believe it either. She's. Ooh, the eyes get cut. Um, the eyes they, get go, cut. they cut <laughs> northward. They're looking for Santa real quick. They're rolled right back up. Um... <laughs> Which, again, good for TV. Good for Great. the show. Um, I think that this, you know, this is... Drag Race Season 1 and 2 is the epitome, is the equivalent of Top Model Season 1 and 2. Top Model Season 2 was way better than Season 1. 100%. Really? Um, just the wh- everything that they learned just by doing the one season. Oh, of course. It improved exponentially, just yeah. like Drag Race. Yeah. And um, I think that this lip sync is like it shows the pressures the tensions the good editing all that yeah and it makes it you want to come back from the commercial to find out who won yeah um and now i like that about drag race um i like before we take a break i don't i i like that and it's still evolving and it's 
it continues to learn from itself. It's um, a monster that eats itself and grows again. It does. Yeah. And I like that about it. And monsters it. aren't always bad things. Like, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's I take appreciate a break. you. Let's I appreciate take a break. you. Willem, are you prepped up? Do you stay prepared? With my once daily pill, yes, ma'am. Yes. So seeing a doctor should be easy and judgment free, especially when you're dealing with intimate issues like sexual health and HIV prevention. Luckily, there's Plush Care. Using Plush Care is a great way to discuss with a trained physician whether Truvada is right for you. Yes. So you probably already know by now that Truvada for PrEP is over 98% effective in preventing HIV. And now you can get PrEP from the comfort of your own home. This is real. Yeah, my home is comfortable. Plush yes. Care lets you see a doctor quickly via video from your phone or computer. Mm-hmm. Most major insurance is accepted and you pay your usual copay. Appointments are available every 15 minutes. Wow. And yeah. there is a reason why Plush Care is the largest online provider of Truvada in the U.S. Their visits are 100% confidential. That means no judgments, no stigmas, no, no side, side eye. eye. They will also work with your insurance to get your medications covered or help you find a cost-effective assistance program. What was your experience getting on Truvada? Mine was one of those things where I had to make an appointment and then I had to go back. And they're like, is this really what you want to do? And I was like, why why is this the hassle? And apparently, you know, it's one of those things where getting it, you have to jump through some hoops sometimes with certain doctors. Yeah. And I... I I'm think, happy I got on it. I mean, this is really revolutionary that plush care exists because you're not having to jump through all those hoops. And I think, I mean, preventing HIV is an extremely important thing. It's the number one issue for me, for sure. Yeah. And getting Truvada now can be very simple. You just go to plushcare.com slash prep mm-hmm. today or search plush care on the app store, book a 15 minute appointment and pick it up from your local pharmacy. It's so easy. I remember Truvada is not a free pass to be out here raw dogging it. It is most effective when it is used in conjunction with condoms. Mm -hmm. Use promo code DRAG Drag for $30 off your next appointment. That's great. So that's plushcare.com slash prep and use that good old promo code DRAG. Drag. Happy prepping. Out of all the queens of season two, one of them stands out as a truth teller, a catchphrase owner, and to her we'd like to say Thank you. Yeah. And her name is Tatiana. So for this season, we would like to do a little segment we call Tati Tidbits. Let's, Let's talk about town closing. That that was your home bar in D.C. for a long time. How long were you there? Oh, gosh. Uh, since 2011. So that would have been eight years. Shit. What's your uh, next step for local gigs? Um, I mean, I'm hopping around to wherever... Well, to be fair, I'm not really home that often on the weekends because I'm always out of town. Right. Truth. But when I am home, I'll like do a show at the Eagle because they just started some drag shows there. Oh, with good. Banaka hosting. Yeah, Banaka. Good old Banaka Devereaux. Yes, God. God. And then, um, oh, yeah. And then um, I might do like a night at Cobalt or maybe a night at Nelly's. You know, I'm just trying to feel it out and see like what I have the time for and you know, when I'm actually home, what I can do. Yeah. And like, everybody's like, where are you performing at home? But like, sometimes when you're home, you actually want to take a moment, you know, not every day needs to be filled. But, um, if we do want to see you, where do we go? Where do we look for your schedule? Is it Tatiana oh. uh, Tatiana now.com. Tatiana then... now, not Tatiana yesterday. We want Tatiana now. <laughs> now. And then obviously all my social, which <laughs> is, you know, Instagram, Tatiana Graham. Um, and then everything else is Tatiana now branded. So, so you know. wait, is now your last name? You know, someone, <laughs> um, I went to check it. You know, sometimes when we check into a hotel for a gig, they have saved us under a, like our drag name and not mm-hmm. our real name. Oh, yes. And one time I went to check in and I was like, it might be under Tatiana. I was like, are you Tatiana now? And I'm like, <laughs> that's amazing. Yes, that's, that's me. Branding, darling. That's a good last name, though. It's Poppy. It. Wow. That does, is kind of cute. Does Tatiana have a last name? She does not. She's, She's just fucking Tatiana. A one name ho, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> untraceable we were i was really devastated about town closing me too uh, that was really like i i mean that was such a great space to yeah. perform in ed's new bar is really oh, cool yeah. though too what's his new bar called like seven or something or nine 
Number nine Number is nine. the fun, like loungy, classy place. And then we also have a uh, trade, which oh. is kind of like dive bar, grungy, that type of stuff. So. Yep, been there. Well, I'm lost trade. Of this I'm episode, do you have any Barry Arsai? <laughs> I love this trick. Jeffrey Moran, pass around party <laughs> bottle. Jeffrey <laughs> Moran, he is currently at CPP Cathedral City Brass. <laughs> cathedral what? Cathedral City Bass is the preferred bathhouse in Palm Springs. Oh that everybody God. goes, oh, you going to CCB? Cathedral CCB. City Bass. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to CCD. I just saw a CCD. Oh, I used to go to CCD Wednesday nights. CCD. No, I go to CCB on Sunday nights <laughs> after uh, May Day. You ever go to Mayhem's Night in Palm Springs? What? No. Mayhem has a once a month Sunday night called Mayhem. It's the first Sunday of the month of two cans. Oh, my God. So much fun. Um, I've been booked there a couple times. Uh, that sounds fair. Yeah, and you could walk there from um, the new spot. The new spot. The new spot. Watch for me on House Hunters. We we talked about this a little before, but I think it's important that yep. that the show it is it's the it's the monster that eats its own tail and then eats itself and then rebirths. Yeah, like even the thing with like the finale format keeps kind of kind of changing and the all-stars format keeps kind of changing and i think that's good because when it stays exactly the same year after year it can become predictable and not as 100 percent. it also makes um the fandom more uh vigilant in what they think is right and who they think should be put forward the fact that they're like oh well if it was these rules this person would have won and that's not fair because that's not how they did it last year and you know i I, know i'm very that girl sometimes i'm ginger i saw my name on the check um (laughs) like there's always those little things where the format changes and like y'all know what i'm talking about um and we all like to be the perfect armchair uh quarterback you know oh like i i said something on the podcast i think last season um about talking about Alyssa's ties for the lip syncs and while i thought i was talking objectively is just like you know a, a drag fan like a football fan who like you know says mm-hmm. you know they don't like tom brady or whatever or they like sam bradford better um i like sam bradford by the way i don't know who any he's of a people. cute uh quarterback who used to play for the eagles okay um real hot native american guy or first nations i don't know anyway um Alyssa didn't take kindly to that and we had it out about other stuff and that came up and i think that uh it was kind of tacky me to talk about it but like i was talking about it the way any fan would talk about it too but I'm since sure. it was me and i knew her um you know, you never want to hear shit about yourself from your sister, so I understand that. We're fine now. Um, her new show is on Netflix, and y'all should watch that um, if you have time. There's an assortment of RuPaul songs that she gets to perform to, and she turns it, you know? Yeah. And I can't help but love some of the Ru music. It's good music. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what keeps one of the things about the show changing is Ru is at the helm of it and making all these new career strides for her. She's on TV more as a boy. She's making mm. these girls jump through more hoops. They're yeah, doing live challenges, mm. live feeds with entertainment celebrities like Mark Malkin. So many things. <laughs> Jeff Moran's there. <laughs> did Did you ever he's have any the, like... He's m- the absolute liquor czar. I know, right? Did you ever do any like media training like after the show or before? Did you have your day with like Jake and John? <laughs> I wish. Really? No, I learned by just doing it. I'm still learning. Oh. It, I, you know, it's challenging. And when you do get asked the same question over and over again, because like Jeremy and I have been doing a lot of press for Amethyst, Amethyst Journey. Journey. Yes. And they actually ask you the same questions over and over and How over. How did you get into drag? <laughs> What are some of your biggest drag inspirations? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I understand that. I did the smart thing. The persons that br- they brought into the room while we were getting mic'd and that gave us like little media training for like the network day. Um, yeah. One of them was named Jake Slane. And I was like, oh, I'm going to hire you to be my personal publicist after this. And I did. And it worked. And then he went to work with PEG, uh, my agent. Mm-hmm. And um, he, you know, he implemented all those great ideas that we had across the board. And a lot of these girls have benefited greatly from it. And some of us are eligible for Grammys now. And like, it's a whole new world. And this show has opened those doors to me for sure. And I, w- I wouldn't want to speak for you, but I think you've benefited yes. greatly from it too. Yes. For sure. Um, who do you think is uh, the most like memorable queen from season two right now? Is there uh, anyone having episode? like a renaissance? Or, yeah, this episode for sure. Well, 
I mean, I'm looking at it on the screen right now, and it's that Tatiana being shocked. At- <laughs> that <laughs> meme said- still reverberates. It's so good. Uh, I mean, Tati. It's- it's a very good meme. It's a Tati tidbit. You'd want to see at our uh, Instagram, which is Race Chaser Pod. Check us out there. Yeah. We, yeah, we have fun on that pod. I like that it's, uh, I, I, or not that pod, that, that Instagram. Oh, I like that. I go to it and I'm like, oh, that's funny. I forgot that one we did. Uh huh. It's very lo fi. Yeah. Be- oh. We're like, we're just going to take a cell off phone. Of computers. We're going to say, take a cell phone picture with the reflection of, of the sun. Like, I don't care. That's the aesthetic. Season two audition tape aesthetic. Hallelujah. For sure. Um, I'm there. Do you have, have you, uh, caught up with any of the season two queens lately is there any tea on them that you know of any tea on tati um i saw jessica uh um the uh the drag brunch recently uh, rockwell's the ross matthews one the um it wasn't ross ross matthews at the time is he doing it he it's his ross now? is doing the one at rockwell now um and it's amazing my friend six is there beverly's there um yeah i know tyra was doing it as well uh, yeah. Um, Throwing shoes and such. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Ross is great as a brunch presenter because he loves drag. And, you know, who wouldn't want to eat brunch with Ross? He's bubbly. He's up. Yeah. Um, and that's at Rock. If you're ever in L.A., it's at Rockwell on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, maybe. I forget. Just Saturdays. Yeah, just Saturdays. Oh, just Saturdays. Oh, we had the control room tell us it's just Saturdays. The uh, My earpiece. My earpiece. Nothing you say matters unless the microphone is on, Willow. You may not know this, but Willow and I are actually like uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. We do our job on the mic, but we actually aren't friends and we don't talk. After As soon as the mics turn off, we don't speak. <laughs> do you believe all that? Call David. Do you, be- <laughs> do you believe all that? Do you believe that they weren't friends making that show? Tex in the City? Do you not know what I'm oh, talking about? Oh, I was on the show. Let, let me tell you something about this. And this is a tidbit. Let's talk about a tidbit. So when the, the thing about Sex in the City is they got me to say it by literally saying, talk about shows you've been on. And then they mentioned them. And I was like, okay. But the reason that blue coat in my episode was important was I was an extra in that scene of 300 where she actually fell down on the runway. So yeah. I saw her do it in that. I saw Kevin Aquan that day. That was, as a 17-year-old fag, that like, day was big, epic for me. Deal. And I could pick myself in the crowd. But the, the Sex in the City I'm remembered for more is when I'm an extra outside samantha's apartment when it's me flotilla debarge meatpacking district yeah hookers back when it was meatpacking and i remember yeah. it was 1999 and wow uh kim cattrall i remember had these boots on in between every take because heels on on cobblestone not good heels at all as much as those ladies wore them not good but i remember i was like what are those boots they were uggs it was my first pair of uggs i ever saw in 99 kim was wearing them on set because they were like so they were the flat Uggs that we all know. The flat Uggs in '99. Uh, you know. So she was on the cut. She was on the wave, the new wave. Yeah, for sure. And um, just being an extra in that scene, and then getting to wear the coat on Drag Race, they made me talk about all that too in an interview, but never showed it on the show at all. And I was like, that would have been good storyline, but they had <laughs> mined Sex and City for all it was worth already. And I had won that episode so clearly by then. They didn't need more ammo. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So wait, who? Tell me about the women on the set. Did you interact with them at all? Um, Kim. I yeah, Kim for sure. She was Kim lovely. Cattrall. I talked about mannequin with her, and she's like, "Yeah, we shot in Philly, at Wanamaker's." I was like, "I'm from there. I know. We go there all." Like it was. She was lovely. Everything you would want her so to be. So she was cool and chill. Cool and chill. Talk to the dolls. Mm-hmm. Lovely. What? I, if there's ever a female actress on set, and there's drag queens. They're pretty much will like, you know, it's like Gaga. She sees a drag queen immediately goes there. What about Sarah Jessica Parker? Sarah Jessica Parker, I was only on the day that was um, the big crowd scene where she walked down the runway. So, oh, okay. So um, really... She, she, I remember there was like a wave to everybody at the end. or like, a thank you. Like, she was lovely. Yeah. Lovely lady. Good. And I remember yeah. looking through a curtain slit and watching Kevin Aquan paint her a little bit. Just for like standing from where I <sighs> would. I got, an, I got an advantage point. And just watching and watching yeah. Kevin Aquan work. And he was eight foot a genius. Yeah. Because she... she I mean, I'm not, she's, um, she looked beautiful in that episode. Yeah. Um, these kind of, it makes me feel old talking about these experiences. And I saw a picture of myself from 17, um, last, last night, I think. And I put it on my mirror. Was it your real hair? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and I. Real hair, real brows. uh, I just looked at it and I was like, fuck, you look like trouble, kid. And and you could see in my eye, I look fucking nuts and crazy. And I'll put that on the, the, uh, we'll do flashback, whatever day. 
and put yeah. up our, our 17 year old pictures on race chaser pod um did you know that i'm willem <laughs> i did know you're alaska aren't you this has been a really excellent journey so and fun i'm really grateful that you all have joined us mm-hmm. for this episode of race chaser if you'd like to follow us you can go to at the only alaska and at willem and it's our race at Chase- the only alaska 5000 5, darling twisted. am i allowed to change that you put those numbers on your name um do yeah. i have to write a letter of intent or something ask your manager no because i have a blue you're verified. check you have I to. can't just change it. Really? Because I tried. Uh, I can't just change it. I have to go through some process. Call Bungles. You know? When did you change from No Extra Eye to Will? Uh, years ago, three years ago? My, when my book came out, my publisher handled it. I need to change it. Well, so, write a book. St- <laughs> you, Moral of this episode, write a book. What would you change it to? Um, Alaska Thunderfuck. Alaska. Uh, um, Al- um. Yeah, because you take up a lot probably, of characters with this. Probably Alaska Airlines, though, probably has it. Oh my god, can I have just Alaska? What about the state? Does it exist? And I'm stealing it from whoever has it. The state of Alaska does exist. Do they have an Instagram? <laughs> Who? Are you fucking kidding me? Who? <gasps> Who is he? David Bullock? Looks like he's um, a director or an actor or. A movie. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, well, that's not cool. we'll keep you posted on this. We'll journey. let you know. For now, I'm at the only Alaska five thousand, and you can always follow the Instagram of our podcast, which is at oh, Race Chaser, Chaser Pod. Pod, and you can rate and comment on this podcast. Tell us how rotted or fantastic we are, and subscribe so you know when the new episode comes out. But it's always Wednesday, so. We will be back on our next episode to continue our journey down Drag Race memory lane. So for for now, bye. Bye. Race Chaser. Race Chaser is not endorsed by World of Wonder, Viacom, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. RuPaul's Drag Race and all names, pictures, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. Forever. Race Chaser with Alaska and Willem is a forever dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Our theme song is Race Chaser by Alaska Thunderfuck, available on iTunes.